This is Joost for dyphotography.net, and I'm here with Francis at the Adobe booth looking at Premiere Pro at IBC 2023. Francis, how's it going? Welcome to Adobe. We are very excited about these releases that we have coming up. We've got some new AI-powered goodness that are going to help you get your edit done much faster. We've got uh, enhancements to enhance speech, which is going to basically clean up poorly recorded audio. This was originally an Adobe podcast, and we're now bringing it on device into Premiere Pro, so it runs locally on your machine, no internet connection required, and you have unlimited access to it. That, that's a lot of information to start with. Let's start at the start. So I have a poor, a poorly recorded interview, and so you can help us. Yeah, so actually a really good example would be, let's say this microphone right here were to die or you pull it away, right? And it doesn't sound so good. You can use enhanced speech to automatically find that dialogue and make it sound better and make it sound like it was recorded in the studio. All right, and how's that done? Can you show us? Yeah, let's jump into a, into a demo. Because you were saying this was earlier uh, available in Adobe Podcast and now it's fully integrated in the new Premiere Pro. That's right. So... Here's an example of some archival footage that was recorded off of VHS tape from the 90s. And uh, it's quite noisy. And so I'm going to play it back and you'll, you'll hear what it sounded like originally. And then we'll turn on enhanced speech and you'll hear the difference. All right, cool. Let's go. The race is being sponsored this year by the Chelmsford JCs and the Courthouse Racquetball Club. Organizers say the date change is designed to bring more attention to the race that will hopefully translate into more money for the scholarship fund. So now let's back this up and we'll turn on enhanced speech here in the essential sound panel. It's just a single button press. It's going to analyze it and then it's going to enhance it using an AI powered process. The race is being sponsored this year by the Chelmsford JCs and the Courthouse Racquetball Club. Organizers say the date change is designed to bring more attention to the race that will hopefully translate into more money for the scholarship fund. That, that actually sounds a lot better and that took you like, what, three seconds? Less than that, it's just a single click. But in the event that you think that the result sounds a little bit too sort of like close mic you know, in this particular example, there's a lot of uh, background noise of like people clapping and such. You want to keep that as well. Yeah, you want to bring that back in. We're providing a mix slider, which is right here. And so you can ride that amount and choose how much enhancement do you want. All right, that's so actually, so you don't have to pull like the original layer under it and then... That's exactly right, yeah. Much faster. And another example that we have here is, here's an interview where the microphone failed during the interview. And so all we have is the on-camera audio. And uh, so this is going to sound quite bad at first. Hi, I'm Keenan Matthews and I'm a track coach. It's bad. Let's fix it. So with the single button press, we're going to click enhance speech. We can choose the mix amount. In this case, I'm going to go all the way up because I want it to be very clean. Hi, I'm Keenan Matthews and I'm a track coach. That's, that's actually really, really good. So um, what you sometimes have is that, say, words at the end of the word are kind of like cut off a bit abruptly. How does Adobe deal with that? So what you can do, sometimes uh, you can solve that by just writing the mix amount, like bringing the mix amount down a little bit. Yeah. But of course, one of the benefit of having it right inside Premiere Pro is that you don't have to send stuff up to the cloud and bring it back down. So we would just extend the edit a little bit and bring in that last syllable and you can reprocess it and it's good to go. Nice, that's very good. Yeah, we're quite proud and this is gonna really resurrect badly recorded audio and in some cases save an interview that would otherwise be unusable. Because I would accept and I think most people would accept like poor camera work, like we all look at videos of people doing things with their phones, but poor audio is big no-go. That's exactly right. And in this kind of situation, there's so much background noise that yeah. this feature is going to really help get much more intelligible interviews in loud environments like this. That's so useful. Okay, what else is new? All right, so big improvements to text-based editing. So let's jump into text-based editing. So, so does it look different again? I think in every update, the text-based editing looks a bit different. Uh, so we released text-based editing back in May. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's only been out a few months now. We previewed it at NAB, 
And when I was doing a lot of demos back at NAB, we got a lot of the same kind of feedback again and again and again. They love that they can edit with a transcript and find their sound bites and edit it into the sequence. Yes. And they love that they can find these pauses here, but I got the same feedback again and again. And it was, I can find all those pauses, but can I just delete all of them all at once? Yes. Right? And so now we can. So that's automated or how does that work? Let me show you here. So there's a filter. I can filter for pauses. It's gonna show me all the pauses. In this case, it's finding eight pauses throughout here. Uh, but we also have a minimum pause length setting so that you can go in and choose how, how much is considered to be a pause. Right now it's set to one second, but if I dial this down, you can see all the pauses coming in. So the minimum is a tenth of a second, which is quite short. So if I take out all the pauses that are at least a tenth of a second, it's going to make a very fast-paced sort of YouTube-style yeah. jump cut. Yes, yeah, I like cut, cut, cut. Hip hop added, I think that's called. That's right. Uh, so let me dial this down to a tenth of a second. I can hit delete and delete all and see how it automatically just went. Yeah, that's a lot of codes. Saves you a lot of time if you wanted to do that by hand. That's exactly right. And you know, I was an editor for about a decade before coming to Adobe and I did a lot of dialogue editing just like this. It's and very recognizable. Absolutely. So this probably just saved me half an hour, an hour maybe, worth of possibly of going through and finding all those pauses and removing them. So this is gonna really speed up the workflow of dialogue editing. Definitely, and you can just adjust the dial which you were just showing to make it that little bit more natural or jump cuts real quick, all you want from zero to one. That's exactly right, And but there's more. Oh wait, there's more. There is more. We also have filler word detection. So a filler word is like, um, ah, uh, uh, that kind of thing. We, quite, we, we tend to have quite a lot of those. We do. It's, anyone who's not a professionally trained speaker and like a news anchor is going to have those sort of natural nonverbal utterances from time to time. And so I can go through, find all the filler words and perform the same action. So here we see, you know, there's a few. These folks actually seem like they were pretty good speakers. But I'm going to hit delete all. And again, it just removes them all from the timeline. That's amazing. And what if, say you do a playback and you find that one bit was not great. Do you have to go all the way back or can you go back, just check out that one specific one that was here? Yeah, so this is just making edits to your timeline, very traditional timeline editing. We have all the tricks of the trade available to us. Uh, this is a multi-camera sequence, so I could switch camera angles if I wanted to cover up jump cuts, I could add B-roll. And if you find that it's too tight, just open it up, regular editing. That's so easy, so useful. This can take, this can save so much time. Oh, it really is, it really is. We're, we've been finding that people are speeding up their rough cuts by a, a factor of 10. That's amazing. So is there anything else new in this one? Yeah, so one of the things that is very difficult to demo but is very important is the timeline performance. So what we've done is we've sped up the speed with which the timeline itself refreshes. All right. Talk about the UI itself. So this is, you know, zooming, scrolling, and doing any of those kind of trims that you're used to doing. All the time. Yeah, all of that. It's, it's a, thousands of micro interactions that make up an editing session. All of that is going to feel smoother as you're doing those manipulations in the timeline. It's actually five times improved. Five times, that's actually quite a lot. Yeah, it is quite a lot. And what this means is that it's just gonna feel buttery smooth as you're editing, and at the end of an editing session, you might not exactly know why, but you feel less fatigued because everything has been smooth and responsive, and it does exactly what you expect exactly at the moment when you do it. And so you don't have those little micro pauses, as you're kind of just, you're not waiting, but you're just, you want to dive into it, you want to keep going, because you know what you're doing when you're editing most of the time. You don't want to be, it's not waiting, but if it can go faster, it's always useful. That's exactly right. It's, it's the difference between like petting a soft cat or petting a hard rock. So is there anything new on Lumetri? Uh, yes, we've also been improving color. And what we've done here is we've added a new settings panel to the Lumetri color panel. And what this does 
is it aggregates all of the complex color management settings from throughout the app and puts them into one place. And the way that you can think about this is, how did my color end up a certain way? And there's a lot of things that play into that. There's, do I have display color management turned on? Am I transmitting out to a third party external transmit monitor? What are my settings, my viewer gamma set up for, for the uh, display? What is the color space of the source clip and all that? So it's a lot of uh, really under the hood color management related stuff. But one of the benefits that we get here actually is, have you heard of the QuickTime Gamma? Tell me about it. Okay, so the QuickTime Gamma problem is it only affects Mac. I'm on a Windows right I'm here. a Mac user, so I know what it is. Yeah, yeah. So what happens is you will do a color grade in Premiere, you'll spend hours and hours doing your wonderful color grade, and then you export it, you open it up in QuickTime, and all of a and sudden- suddenly your, your contrast is down, the colors, and what's going on? It looks slightly different, yeah. It looks a bit, like you said, a little bit less contrast. So what we're used to is using, while exporting, use this compensation LUT. Yeah. Oh, fun fact about that LUT. I actually designed that LUT and created that LUT years ago. No way, uh, thank you for that. Yeah, well, it was a stopgap measure, and now we have a proper solution which is that you can set the viewer gamma to match QuickTime. It's right here. All right. And then this is now going to identically match uh, the view in QuickTime. And so that's not going to be a problem if I send it to somebody else not looking at it in QuickTime. That's, that's exactly right. What you see here is what you'll see in QuickTime and also what you see when you post it online. Important thing to know, though, only on a Mac. This problem only affects Macs. It's the one down, downside of a Mac. <laughs> it's the one difference of a Mac. I'm just joking. Yeah. This actually, I cannot wait to install this because this is, sometimes you forget it because you're busy, you're doing things and like, oh, that one thing, I have to do it again. So can I install this version already? Yeah. Is it available? Everything I've showed you today is available right now in our public beta. So if you have a Creative Cloud dis subscription, just go to Creative Cloud Desktop, look for the beta app section, find Premiere and download it. It can install side by side with your regular, you know, shipping version of Premiere, uh, so you can test it out. And these features will be rolling out into the general release later this fall. So that's exactly what I'm going to do when I get home. Francis, thank you so much for this update on Adobe Premiere Pro. This was Joost at IBC 2023 at the Adobe booth.